So hello folks, this is Garth at GW Leathercraft, and I thought I'd make a short video on Sadler's rivets. I've been watching a surprising number of um, supposedly knowledgeable people, uh, leathercrafters, using Sadler's rivets and their they're kind of missing the point. Now, Sadler's rivets are a very strong way to rivet anything. They are traditionally, they look nice if you like them. Uh, a little bit rustic. Um, and they're great in, in the right place. And, and they can be used places where I don't use them. Um, I quite often will use just the regular uh, rapid rivets or double cap rivets, which are adequate most of the time. These ones I reserve for places where it's necessary. But yet what I see is people, it's not where, they, where are they using them, it's how they're, um, how they're using them or um, how they're assembling them. Now, uh, the first thing, these are copper rivets. They're soft copper. They're, they were originally used because so copper is soft, easy to work with. You also can get brass rivets the same. The brass rivets are a lot more uh, hard. They're a lot harder. They're harder to use, so a lot of people just go with the copper rivets, and, and that is, you know, reasonable. Um, they were used a lot years ago for repairs. I know when I was growing up, we had, we didn't have too many animals, but we did have a few copper rivets and it just, you know, harness or anything, if it breaks, you could just stick a rivet in it and you can do that. You don't need to know how to sew and, and it'll work. So, so about the rivets, they are, they come in two basic sizes. The one I commonly use is this one. And for just for reference, I don't know if the sizes are normally given. This is the smaller of the two, and the diameter of the post is uh, around uh, 135 thousandths of an inch. And the head, not that that really matters, is around 390 thousandths of an inch. Now that is known commonly as a number 12 rivet. Now, the bigger one, uh, commonly known as a number 9, the post is 160 thou, and the head is 400 and 70 thou or thereabouts. I think they're aiming for half inch and 3 8 for this one. Um, so I commonly use the small ones. You know, they're more than adequate when you're just riveting a couple things together. Uh, the big ones uh, are just uh, just bit bigger if you're looking for a little more show. Now, the other thing to know about these rivets is they do come really long. These ones are three quarter and They'll rivet something, you know, five-eighths of an inch thick. Uh, I don't normally have anything that thick, uh, so that's lots long. You just cut off the excess. The um, They come inch and a half. I don't know how big you can get them, two inch maybe. I don't know. I guess certain places you'd use that. Um, not, in, not in what I do. Uh, the other thing to notice is, of course, that they have a head. Uh, they have this, which is called a burr. Okay, it's a little washer, and the washer is smaller, the hole in the washer is smaller than the size of the, the post. Now, it will go over the front, the front end, because there's a chamfer, um, and that's so you can start it, but uh, once it gets up there, it fetches up, and that is so that when you set it, or start to set it, you can, you can, um, push it down and it'll stay and it'll hold it in place long enough for you to finish the job. So I'll go through the the way that I set these rivets. Uh, this is the uh, the traditional way to set them. Um, anybody that uses anything else, um, well 
course, some of it is a matter of opinion. Uh, I'm, I should be allowed my opinion. I allow everybody else their opinion. Anybody who doesn't do it like this is doing it wrong. Okay, there you go. I said it. Now, two pieces. That was a one-eighth punch mark, or a one-eighth hole. Uh, it's bigger than one-eighth, of course, because it, the, but that's what it's called. So we're going to go from the, from the one side through both pieces. That's all we're, that's all we're doing. We're, we're not making anything right now. We're just going to show you how this works. So you put it through. You bring over some sort of an anvil. You're going to need something for an anvil. It can be anything. This is just a little craft anvil I have on my bench. Um, it, uh, can be a big anvil, can be anything that serves the purpose of an anvil. You'll get with your kit, it, or, or separate if you buy it separate, your setter. Now, this is steel. You want to use um, a hard hammer on it. I'll get this more over in frame. You, um, It's just soft steel. Uh, use your rawhide or your plastic mallet, um, not even even a brass mallet or a copper mallet, but not a, a regular hammer. So you'll set the hole. You see, let me show you. There's a hole. Okay, you set that over the end of the rivet, and you drive it down. Just that, just like that. Now you you want it tight, and you see there's when you turn it, it's there's friction. It's it is it is relatively tight. Now, once you get to that point, you'll notice, depending on the length of your rivet, that you've got a bunch sticking off, right? You don't want all that. So you take your diagonal cutters. These are just a regular pair from the hardware store. The, these work good. Any kind of nipper for wire, anything like that, a wire nipper of some sort. And you go on there, and you cut it off, and the length is... Well, you're not going to get it the same every time, so so going for the same every time, you know, you might as well not. But try for close, and and what you want is you, I like a boat, I don't know if I can get that so you can see. Yeah, maybe, maybe there. It, it, uh. Basically, I just lay the nippers on, and they, of course, don't trim right to the, right to the, you know, because of the way they're made, they, they leave a little. And that works pretty good for me. Now, this is where most people fail. Um, the operation that you are doing, it doesn't matter whether it's a copper saddler's rivet, or a knife maker's rivet, or a rivet in a, in a, at a flat belt or a brake lining, any rivet, the operation that you are doing is peening, okay? Peening, P-E-N, or P-E-E-N-I-N-G. And what you are doing is you're rounding the rivet over so that it, the end of the rivet, uh, it gets, you're making it bigger, you're mushrooming it out so that it, catches the 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 burr, the burr or the washer and makes a solid end on it so that it it doesn't the washer doesn't come off okay the washer is there and the head of the rivet is it's big to support the leather but this peening operation keeps everything together so that it doesn't come apart uh, it does a very good job of that but what you want to do you don't I've watched so many of them I don't know if they're carpenters or what, but they, they, they'll they use a claw hammer, for freak's sake, and they'll just go bashing on it, okay? I want to warn you, the problem with doing that, this is copper rivet, okay? It is not, it, it is easy to bend this rivet. Now, maybe with that being that short, I wouldn't. But if it's got any length in it, and as I said, these come out here two and a half, or well, two inches I've seen, um, you're going to, by bashing straight on the end, full bore, you're going to bend the rivet. Now, a bent rivet, anybody who has ever used rivets, I mean, I generally, if I bend the rivet, I take it out, start over. So that is the, that is what you're looking for, sort of thing. Um, so... Do it the right way first, and then 
you'll get the you, you you do the job right you get the job done right in the end and it's the job you want it's the finished product you want so you take the the this is a ball peen hammer it comes from this this is the peen end of the of the hammer and this is round like a like a ball and this is for peening not the flat end okay and the reason it's round is so that you can distribute the force not direct onto one spot like you would if you hit it here flat but it directs it some down and some out like this okay because of the shape of it so you're not you're, you're directing your force more uh, uh, like it's it's uh, it's not a direct on the end of the rivet it is spread out more so what it does is it causes the rivet to spread rather than just bend in the case of hitting it flat on so and what you want to do is you want to hit with small strokes uh, you can grip the hammer up less short if you want uh, depending of course on you would have to gauge it if it was a really long rivet you'd still want to hit it fairly light but you're not trying to squish the rivet you're not trying to smash the rivet you're not driving a nail you are rounding over the head okay and that is all you're doing and you could do that all day now that is a properly peened rivet okay there's nothing to catch on your fingers because it's down below the it, it's well it's not really down below the surface but the burr kind of caves in a little and the rivet uh uh, peens over and there's not really any way to get rid of the the edge completely you will always have a little edge around you you go around it as best you can and get rid of it there, there'll always be a little bit of an, an edge but it's not enough to uh, catch on your fingers and because we did it correctly this end drew down a little right below the surface like you're supposed to you're gradually supposed to uh, peen this over and and by doing it properly you actually squeeze everything together instead of just making a flat on the top okay the other thing with using a hammer the flat of the hammer you can't round it over all you can do is smash and it's going to it's going to mushroom the head it's probably if it's very long it's going to bend the shank and but also it's going to um, uh, the mushroom on the head is going to be flat on the top but uh, round underneath instead of being flat on the bottom and round on the top so that is how you peen a rivet and the uh, if you do it like that you'll end up with good results. Thanks for your time. Uh, thanks for watching. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.